Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. And here in this, in the continuation to our series on Apache Spark Deep Dive, today we'll look on how to manage Spark and specifically Spark performance and optimization through the partitions. So the topic for the today is, topic for the day is managing Spark partitions. So guys, let's start. So I think as everybody understands that Spark splits data into partitions. That's how the data is distributed across the nodes in the cluster. And then each transformation or each computation is performed on individual partitions. That is how we achieve the uh, level of parallelism and that is how the parallel processing is achieved in the distributed computing. The whole idea in this video, what we are trying to understand is that what is that right way to optimize the data partitioning in the Spark world so that your computation start running effectively. Let's try to understand it with an example. Say we have created one data frame uh, with number 1 to 10. And if I try to look out at the number of partitions, as we discussed in one of the previous videos about the default partitioner and hash partitioner, we know that there is none, none as the default partitioner. And data is sliced in a round robin fashion. So I've got uh, partition size for this data frame as 4, right? And if I try to write this uh, data frame with 4 partitions as a CSV onto the disk, I'll get 4 parts. So there will be 4 CSV parts would be created. Each would have the data uh, corresponding to that particular partition, right? And if I see this, what I've seen is Partition A has data 1, 2. Partition B has some data. C has some data. D has some data. More or less, they are uh, kind of uh, equal distribution. Right? Now, if we'll try to do a coalesce, right? That is one of the mechanisms to reduce the number of partitions data frame. So if we try to do a coalesce, we'll have to see how the things will happen under the line. And we are trying to do in this example, coalesce <clears throat> this particular data frame that we have created into two partitions. We have five partitions currently, right? So we did we fired this command call as two and then we check the size is uh, the number of partitions is two for now. And if we see now we have two partitions A and C. So that means the data from B and D is moved to partitions A and C, right? So if we see this when once I've written it back into the CSV, I've got two parts. And if you see here, the data from partition A has moved to data to partition, uh, sorry, partition B has moved to partition A, data from partition B. And similarly, data from partition D has moved to partition C. So what we are trying to understand here is the shuffling has only happened from partition B and D. So this is the highlight. This is this is the point to be noted, right? So the, the data from partition B and D only has moved. So that the shuffling is only happened 50%. Correct? Now, let's try to do the repartition on the same data frame that we have. This time we try to do the repartition with the two partitions as a size, as a number of partitions. And what we see here, again, when we write it onto a, a file and look the contents, what we see that the one partition has more number of elements and the other partition has less number of elements. So what has happened here? And apart from that, if you see the partitions are created new altogether, right? So now the data from partition A, B, C and D is moved to A, B, C and partition X, Y, Z also contain data from each original partitions. Right. So, so what we have seen here in the coalesce, the only two partition move their data to the existing partitions, but here the entire data is shuffled. And then the algorithm has tried to do some sort of, you know, uh, equidistribution of the data across. So you may be looking at the elements and saying that, you know, elements are looking more in one partition and less in the other, but that's not the case because based on the chunk or size of the chunk of the data, based on the prescribed uh, you know, data size, 
uh, which is in cases shuffle partition is 128 MB. That's how data would be partitioned and it will try to keep it as close as possible to that number so that we can have, you know, kind of, we can do the equidistribution of the data among the partition. But what has happened here, here it has happened the full shuffle. So the data which has moved across the network in the case of repartition is comparatively double in this example if we take compared to what we have seen with the colase. Yeah, but uh, the one thing that we cannot do with the colase is we cannot increase the number of partitions. Even if I try to do uh, say data frame dot colase, uh, it has four partitions. If I try to do colase eight, and if I check the size, it will be four only. Now with three partitions, we can always go ahead and uh, increase the number of partitions. And here we have this data frame that is uh, where we have increased the number of partitions, right? The same example we took. The only thing we have to make sure in the case of uh, repartition is the number of partitions goes up. So let's try to take one other example where we are trying to do the repartition by the column. That also is doable by repartitioning, right? Repartitioning, we can do a repartitioning on the column. So we have created this small data frame with age and color. And I'm trying to do a repartitioning on the color column. And when we did that, we had created two partitions. And here, if you see, the partitions are done based on the column value or the column color. That's how the partition has happened. Uh, when we try to do uh, the repartitioning by column, it is as same as doing the indexes in the relational database. So if I try to fire some join or some sort of say reduce uh, or by key kind of operations on this particular partition key, my operations would be super fast. It lacked as an index. Uh, we're trying to do an analogy with the relational database. Okay. Now let's try to take uh, one real world example. Uh, suppose we have some huge data where we're talking about 2 billion rows, around 1 TB of data. And say the current number of partitions we have are like 13,000 partitions. And if I try to take out some sample from that huge data set, maybe it's doing some operations or trying to find out some anomalies or something. We're trying to take out, say, some sampling, which is a small fraction of that. And if that fraction we try to take out, say, using this example, you know. So I had one TB of data, which initially right now has 13,000 partitions. And if I try to take out even, say, 0.0001% uh, of, of one uh, millionth of the data from that one TB data set, we'll get some, you know, uh, 2000 records only, right? But those 2000 records also would have 13,000 partitions because the partitioning is inherent, inherited from the existing data set. And that will be a big problem because such a small set with such a huge number of partitions, if, even if I'll try to write it, it'll create 13,000 part files. And writing in that, your system will take a huge amount of time. So what we're essentially trying to do here to make it work, how we're trying to manage the partitions here now in the Spark is we're trying to see that the data has been decreased by a millionth times. Uh, similarly, we try to reduce the partitions. We will fill, uh, so if, I, if we try to reduce the partitions in the same order, it will come around say one partition. Right. If your one mil, uh, if your one TB of data has 13,000 partitions, so my 2,000 rows, you know, would have only one partition by that calculation. So we'll make it four, so that we have some degree of parallelism, because each partition would be worked about by individual uh, threads and tasks. Right. So we'll get parallelism there. And if I'll try to work it out this way, you know, what we have found now. To do, uh, if we try the operation of counting the records or rows on this data set, which is now repartitioned, it only takes two seconds. 
after doing the repartition from 13,000 to 4 partitions, now it only takes 2 seconds. While initially, when it had 13,000 partitions, it took 241 seconds to count to just do a simple operation of count. So we are getting a massive sp uh, speed improvement, right? So, so what we are essentially trying to drive out here is we have uh, partitions as the underlying unit of data which would be operated upon. That is a minimal possible set of data on which any computation would be applied. And it is very essential in the Spark world to manage the partitions. So we have the right set and number of partitions, right sizing of partitions, uh, because so that we can uh, leverage the beauty of parallelism in the Spark world. Having one partition would kill the entire entire uh, parallelism at the same time having too many partitions would be over parallelism which will make your cluster keep on waiting for nodes and cpus to execute those threads right so uh, this is what we have in this video what we are what we are trying to drive is how we can do the right set of or optimum uh, management of partitions in this park so guys thanks for listening to this video watching this video. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.